I think a refresher is really cool, but a refresher on the big screen, that's yeah. a fun way to do it. I'm about it. Especially yeah. like Gladiator. Yeah. That's Put right. my best picture. In the, in the year 2000. In the year 2000. Yeah. <laughs> that's another auto movie. Bill Jason Paxton. Derulo uh, and, and year 2000 and, and, and are, yeah. are his trainers. <laughs> and we can figure out two more phrases. He will Winter Soldier on us. <laughs> Welcome back to the break room. What is going on with these big theatrical re-releases? And should Marvel be doing the same thing? It's the Monday headline show. Hit that graphic. H-E-H-E-L-A-N-E-S. Oh, hey. oh, I did not I'd nail that. that. I did not uh, nail that. <laughs> I'm Zach Huddleston and I am thrilled thrilled to be joined today by Maude Garrett. Wait, is that your thrilled face? Thrilled. <laughs> <laughs> thrilled. And Erica Woos is here. Hey, hey. Good to see y'all. Um, we have a lot to talk about. A lot of different stuff. A bunch of trailers coming out. Uh, some uh, uh, news about Joker 2 that you could sing about. <laughs> and um, how are we feeling about this Seth Rogen Venom project? Don't really? say yet. Uh, <laughs> Don't say yet. I was ready. Yet. Yeah. <laughs> Take got, that little bit. Put it. You got a rebel over here. Yeah. <laughs> uh, before we uh, get into that news, yeah, a lot of trailers have come out in the yeah. last week. We already had videos up on the new Rockstars channel. Actually, one just uploaded a few hours ago for Alien Romulus. Ooh. Beetlejuice, Beetlejuice we put out last week. Um, uh, a fun gimmick, um, House of the Dragon released two trailers, one for each of the two houses. You have to pick a side. Yep, yep. What's your side, Mon? Ah, uh, well, I've read the books. Sure. I, I, you know, there was a, a, a big discussion, there was a meeting, the council was all present, where Viserys declared his daughter mm -hmm. as official heir, that never changed. There was a lie that was spun, thus created a war. So team team Targaryen. Yeah, that's what we were saying. I asked that's team black, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Like it's it's hard to be team green right now. Maybe there'll be some new stuff that could develop. And that's wild considering the Targaryens are not necessarily the most lovable folks. No, at all. But I do think green is a strong representation of the patriarchy. Mm. Fun. Even though it's ironically led by a, a woman for the most part. Yeah, but right? to put her son yeah. in the seat. Mm. What a little so asshole he is. has to stay as a patriarchal society. Um, but, but we were talking before the show, I love gimmick trailer releases like that. Like, especially for a second trailer, because the first trailer for House of the Dragon came out last year. But like, as a second trailer, as we're kind of getting closer, like, a, a different format like that, like the dual trailers, or like a trailer from like the point of view of a different character, or something like that, is is fun to kind of mix it up and keep it interesting. Mm -hmm. It's a fun marketing tool, you know, to get, get people on sides. You know, my side's gonna win. No, my side. Yeah. I think yeah. A new one that's just happened recently for a horror movie. Um, journalists that are covering, I think, or, uh, some people are getting it, and it's like it looks like a hand drawn letter of like sort of dark nuns or entities with like a doll girl in the middle and there's like no letter you don't know what it's about mm. and like the addresses have been handwritten kind of oh interesting well i can't wait to hear how that develops um other trailers and actually speaking of one i think we're gonna watch it right now we got a little teaser for the penguin series <laughs> it's gonna come out uh <laughs> later this year we still don't they give us that teaser they've still not said the release date we for this call series. it a teaser we should call it a monologue Oh, mm. fair. Which that's certainly like a standard format in trailers, right? Like an uninterrupted with spliced over different footage, yeah. but like one character just speaking. I'm trying to think of a good example of that. Usually VO. Yes. What do we call it? A it teaser was, log. It was like, th it was 13 days when they attacked. <laughs> Yes. Which, you know, exactly. Yes, that kind of thing. <laughs> Boom. Tease, tease a log. Tease a log. Yeah. Tease a log. <laughs> Patent pending. Copy. Tease a log sounds like you need to go to the bar. That's what I was going to say. <laughs> tease a log is what happens when I'm about halfway through a burrito. <laughs> no, that's a prairie dog. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's very good. Your cousin. That's I'm the, that's here. The I missed y'all. <laughs> so happy about that. <laughs> um, but, um, uh, great transition. Uh, speaking of shit. No, 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 this is not shit. I'm actually very excited for this series. Get you. And I think this is actually a really good teaser. Let's, let's watch the teaser. First things first, and this is like a topic that would come up a lot around those CW shows like Gotham or whatever. Are we gonna see Batman in the show? Is Robert Pattinson mm. gonna show up at all? No. You have me at HBO crime series mm. in 
right? Like, oh, and then it happens to be set in the DC universe. Oh, that's a fun wrinkle. But like HBO tends to do like miniseries and whatever so well. I'm, I'm, I'm interested in this looks. It'll be hitting the gritty, uh, dim, moist uh, energy of that last Batman movie. I think it looks great. It will be interesting. You know, certainly that trailer, not only no Batman, but, you know, no hint at other canonical villains other than gangsters and, and yeah, whatever. Yeah, this is Gotham Sopranos. Mm. Yes. That's kind of how Even, I Even, I mean, his makeup is very Tony reminiscent Sopranos. of Tony Soprano. <laughs> yeah. and the accent, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Also, the... Um, I can't remember the Matt Reeves Batman. The uh, they show multiple times the kind of like um, the boot uh, braces yeah. or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Was he wearing anything like that in the film? I don't remember. I have to imagine that he probably got that from the car accident he was in, right? Because oh, he like that was like the one of the big last moments we see him in before like the the kind of yeah. the shootout at the and, end. And how appropriate if that's like another like penguin thing or not a right. waddle but it oh, does affect it. his movement a little bit look you at know? the little easter eggs they drop in, in yeah. there look at that i love that we're not we're not going to see a single penguin in this show though no. i'm no. quite devastated no danny devito that. that's uh, sad. as long as colin has some black goo come out of his face Ooh. that's all i want from his well, penguin. i mean we know he's chomping on cigars yeah. and depending on the way you chomp you can get a little black goo that's leakage true. That's true. um <laughs> but i think the show looks great i think the closest we've gotten is it's going to be late 2024. I think we're anticipating a fall um, release there. Um, I mean, we're getting House of the Dragon June, July, so maybe that'll roll right into an August, September, something like that. Penguin would be really cool. Uh, I'm excited. I mean, this doesn't give us much, but... I like my Batman quite camp. You know, mm. like, you've got characters like the Joker, the Riddler. Um, it's... Yes, it's... It's quite noir. Noir. Uh -huh. It's it's noirish, which I like. I like that it's a detective thing, but I do like it when it's a little bit camp. And I feel like that is not what's happening in this series at all. I mean, we didn't really get it from the last Batman trilogy, and we're not. We, it's even further away yeah. from like the Schumacher Batman, which is again not a bad thing. But it's like, how is a penguin? Like, how did he get his name? Like, what's mm. You know, like little things like yeah, that. Yeah, there is like an there is a kind of throwaway line I think in the Batman where they explain why they call him the Penguin. But it does like it is a very interesting case when you have like a show that or a, now taking a series so seriously yeah. when it's like you know in Batman you have villains like the Penguin or like Scary. you know Doctor Freeze, right? Like yeah. things we've seen be very Mr. 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 Freeze. Yeah, he hasn't I'll see myself PhD out. Yeah, I don't think he didn't ever. bring it yeah. back. <laughs> but, you know, Poison Ivy, even yes. Bane, even though it wasn't mm -hmm. supposed to be camp. If you're going to talk like this, yeah. we're mm -hmm. this. that's camp. And certainly the Lucha Libre version of Bane or whatever, right? Is extremely mm. camp. Yeah, it is interesting. Like, a, it'll be you know with a series where they might have eight hours. To fill, right? Like, what? How could that tone evolve and like mm -hmm. explore in different directions? Mm -hmm. And we saw a shot, and I think um, Eric did a breakdown of this, uh, where we see a character behind glass, like the same kind mm -hmm. of glass that we saw at Arkham. Mm -hmm. Yeah, with the Joker. What, yeah, yeah, with the Joker and the Riddler kind of talking to each other. And this was not like an existing character. So like, hopefully we go to Arkham a little bit. Maybe we see other. You know, is there a grounded? Just looks like a human killer croc or something like that. <laughs> oh, you know? wow, yeah. That we see. He uh, has a something. crocodile tear, and that's all you get. <laughs> that's it. He likes wearing, uh, yeah, crocodile boots. And that's. Yeah. Uh, question for the group before we move on, though. So, okay, so you guys don't think we'll see Batman in this? Eric, do you think we'll see Robert Pattinson's nah, Batman in nah, this? They no. don't have it in the budget. No. Yeah. <laughs> we might. We might get a Zoe. Uh, uh -huh. Yeah, Zoe Kravitz. Because yeah. she was, you know, quite in the the ring mm -hmm. of crime, yep. like mm -hmm. ring adjacent. Right. So but, like, I, I think like. Do you think how much of the the events of this series though do you think will affect the Batman two? Especially because this is going to be, you know, this is not part of James Gunn's main universe. This is like the Else Worlds. Do you think that like, first of all, do you think Warner Brothers even cares if there's like connectivity between this or just like just make this thing because we've put mm -hmm. the money in it? It's cool. Like, do you think they're prioritizing any interconnectivity here? Well, it'll also be interesting. This was greenlit immediately after the film, and they actually shot all of this last year. Yeah. It's actually been done for a while. And the next Batman movie has been delayed till 2026. So, like, 
there's a world in which this is just a fun romp. They give us a little six, eight episode thing with no real concern for a second season or interconnectivity and just like, it's a little side story. I mean, we don't even know that the Penguin will be in the next Batman movie. He could die. He could die at the end of this. Mm -hmm. If they had the balls, they would kill him. (laughs) They might. Um, Yeah, I mean, that'd be fun. And maybe uh, Colin Farrell's also like, I can't wear this makeup. Yeah. 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 Do it. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Um, But yeah, uh, in other DC news, so we got some interesting um, updates about Joker Faliadu, um, another um, thing coming out this year. Lady Gaga is in it. It's going to be a musical. The commenters want to know if you do that on purpose. Do what? Gaga. <laughs> oh, it's an old Lady Gaga. Galifianakis. <laughs> yeah. it's, it's the most hack thing ever to mispronounce Lady Gaga. Uh, oh, wait, yeah, how many mispronounce it's letters, be? And two of them are Gaga. The same. Uh, uh, but. So they said no, it will be, uh, it's going to be a jukebox musical, meaning that existing pop songs will be repurposed within the film that presumably the characters will then sing. Not just like music playing, but like the characters will be singing these songs. Um, <laughs> so it'll be Joker Glee. Exactly. <laughs> what a nice way to put that. I was thinking of other jukebox musicals. I mean, this is a really old reference, but um, Moulin Rouge comes to mind. Mm, burlesque. Burlesque, yeah. What are some other Glee? I mean, obviously yeah. that entire series was a jukebox musical. Um, often, or Ma- the Mamma Mia films. Yes. We, that's of course just ABBA songs, but like are a couple examples of those. Um, which you know, I, I think is fun. It would have been wild if they would have composed original compositions mm-hmm. for this movie. Well, that was the rumor, right? That there are at least a couple original. Well, there's the the door is open ah. for an original song or two. Which, so we don't know. Uh, I mean, I initially was like, would Lady Gaga have a song in this? But Zach uh, pointed out that she's not with uh, Warner Brothers, her label. Lady Gaga Uh. is under Interscope, Mm -hmm. is her record label, and that is owned by Universal. This Mm -hmm. film is, of course, being put out by Warner Brothers, who does all the DC stuff. Now, that said, often those contracts are fungible, and if Todd Phillips, the director of this movie, really wanted a song from another record label, I'm sure they'd just pay up and get it. Uh, But with that in mind, I did look up a list of some popular Warner Brothers musicians. Oh, okay. Did you? I'm just gonna throw out some names. I'd love to hear your thoughts yeah. on the odds that their songs get into this movie. Because we've been told 15 different songs are okay. gonna be in this movie, maybe more, but a minimum of 15, maybe some originals in there too. Uh, again, Lady Gaga is not one of those, but I did think like, what would be the most, and it would also be very strange if a Lady Gaga song Came, coming Honestly, out of Lady Gaga's mouth is in this movie. She's going to break the fourth wall doing that, and I actually don't hate that. Yeah. But it's also quite self-indulgent, so. Mm. You know. Yes, which she's not above. Yeah, give the people um, what we want. We want Lady Gaga singing her own things in Harley Quinn makeup. Uh, what would be the most appropriate song of hers? Bad Romance? Oh, there you go. Uh, oh, there yeah, you yeah. go. A monster? Mm-hmm. Born This Way? Alejandro? <laughs> it's completely just unrelated, just like a random, I love that. Okay, so here's some uh, Warner Brothers musicians or, or musical artists, um, and you tell me if what you think the odds are. I've got it, I've already got like a gut, is, is Fall Out Boy on that? Ooh, I did not see that in the list I looked up. No, they're I've on just a got, different label, but you There's some oh, instinctual label. thing that's just mm, saying that there's going to be boy. some Fall Out Boy. Interesting. One, and one of the modern Fall Out Boy songs too, like one of the ones that they just not like. Not a hit? <laughs> not, not like Sugar, We're Going Down, not Thanks for the Memories, no dance. Because yeah. the only reason you do something like this is the songs have to be recognizable, right? Yeah. They need to be hits, otherwise, why not just pick make a new song if it's like some obscure track? Mm. Um, so like these are presumably artists that have some hits. Um, I mean, the one my eye immediately went to, Phil Collins. Oh, come on. I mean, just uh, I can feel it coming in the air tonight. Oh, yeah. You know, with the drum break. Ma, don't give Phil Collins that face. <laughs> Phil Collins is a musical genius. Yeah, what do you know? Come on. But what if they like slow it down? It's <laughs> dun, 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 yeah. Dun, bah, bah, oh, yeah. Dun, I can see that. They I mean, do that for trailers all the time. Yeah. Bring yes. The songs. Uh, well, how about something that's more up your alley, Mod? Fellow Aussie, Kylie Minogue? I hope not. Oh. You hope not because you don't like Kylie Minogue or you no, don't want Kylie's her to be great. tarnished by being in a jukebox. Because I think Lady Gaga would be an amazing Kylie Minogue impersonator, but mm. I just, it doesn't fit. Can you, though, can't get you out of my head? Oh, Isn't that such distorted. a great okay. thing for one of them to be singing to the other? La, kind la, of? La. Yeah, that would yeah. work. God damn it. Um, <laughs> you know, oh, well, another one that popped out Prince Ooh. is a artist. And not only does he have a million songs and a bunch of hits, he did Bad Dance. That's true, that he did. Yeah. I mean, would that be nuts? 
a yeah. repurposed bed dance. Spidey Sensei asking the same question. Do you think she would do her own album like Prince did? He he did something for Batman '89. Like, do you think she would do her own run of stuff too? Now, if if it's her doing all these covers, she's not above. She did a whole album of covers of like standards with Tony Bennett. I think right. you know. Mm-hmm. So it's like. I mean, just hearing her do some of these songs, but but I thought other Prince songs, I mean, Let's Go Crazy, yep. Little Topical, mm-hmm. I Would Die For You, oh, it's a slow jam, it's good. also kind of that kind of crazed love yep. kind of thing. Purple Rain, you know, Purple Rain. Joker, oh, you wears purple suits, yeah. you know, and maybe that's a, a coming in your window. Who knows? <laughs> Who knows? How? Purple Rain. That's what that means? Good. <laughs> I think I think if that is your coming, uh, if that is your coming in your window, Something is wrong, and you should see a doctor immediately. Hey, uh, can I see Harley Quinn? She's a therapist. <laughs> oh, touche. Um, okay, a couple others, and some of these I'm, I I don't know music super well, so you know these people might have perfect songs for this. Jason Derulo. Jason Derulo. <laughs> Ed Sheeran. Is that impulsive? No, that's what he starts every song. No, with. I realize that. Every time you hear his name, do you have to sing it? It's like I've been conditioned. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, that's sure. effective. That's that's effective. It's like uh, DJ Khaled. We DJ the best. Khaled. Music. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, Coldplay, mm. My Chemical Romance. They, there could be some good. Oh, like, My Chemical, chemical romance. romance. I yeah. see that. Yeah. Especially see that. they like makeup. You know, I feel like they're appropriate. <laughs> um, the Eagles, of course, have a bunch of. I was thinking of uh, Witchy Woman is an Eagles song. Now that's not mm. totally on brand for Harley Quinn, but Joker in this movie had daddy issues. Yes. Yeah. yeah. Then the Black Parade. Oh yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. 100%. Good, good one. Yeah, he thinks um, uh, Arthur Wayne is his dad, right? There you go. Or he did at one point. Yeah. Um, Arthur or Thomas? Did they change the Thomas. dad's name? No, I think you're oh, right. I'm Thomas. right. Thomas. Um, Red Hot Chili Peppers, Lincoln Park, uh, Aretha Franklin. Oh. Which, like, I feel like that, you know, like um, an old song repurposed with a completely different tone is a fun trick these movies like to use. I was thinking of like Chain of Fools or even like Natural Woman. You make me feel like a natural woman. Respect. Like, R-E-S-P. It, yeah, R-E-S-P. sung by like a crazed character mm-hmm. about her lover or something like that. Yeah. Anyways, throw in the chat. One I would love to see is you two with them because the U2 song that they did for the 1994. 1995. Oh release. yeah, yeah. You know how YouTube brought out that song. Mm-hmm. Was that Batman and Robin or one of those? Batman yeah. and Robin. Um, was it like? It's like four different. It had phrases. a great animated music did, video that I enjoyed. But it was quite dark, and I thought that that would actually be really cool. Uh, to rep- hold me. Hold me. Yes. Thrill me. Kiss me. Kill me. From that, Batman Forever. That one. There it is. I want that one with <laughs> Harley and Joker fun. for this movie. Repurpose that song. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, throw in your chat. I was looking up just like random songs that have crazy in the title, not to be stereotypical, but like, you know, this series deals with a lot of mental illness and uh, sanitariums and all this kind of stuff. So like the Patsy Cline crazy, you know, it's kind of pretty iconic, the yep. country version. I can see Gaga singing that. Yes, sure. um, the heart song crazy on you is a fun one. And also just any, I mean, most songs are about love or like Crazy in Love, Beyonce yep. is a very apropos one. Throw in the chat what you think could be. I feel like that song needs to be just left sacred as it is. That is a perfect song. <laughs> yeah. You know? The, the uh, Fifty Shades of Grey version is, is top notch and it'll never be <laughs> superseded. They did, they did not. <laughs> oh yeah. There, it was like a slowed down version yeah. of that song. Yeah, because it was in one of the trailers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. It was pretty, pretty big, prominent in yeah. that. Uh, shout out to all of our Madam Webs. Um, <laughs> Dakota Johnson. <laughs> um, I still haven't seen it. Same. I just, just, yeah, yeah. I just saw it this weekend. Um, I have thoughts for another episode. <laughs> uh, uh, so uh, real quick, we want to shout out uh, some of the folks who helped us bring this episode to you. Uh, one of today's sponsors, and this is a favorite of Evans. We're going to talk to him in a second about this. Miracle Made Sheets. Um, your temperature has a huge impact on how well you sleep. And Miracle Made Sheets use silver infused fabrics inspired by NASA. They make a temperature regulating bedding that lets you sleep at the perfect temperature all night long. These fabrics also prevent up to 99.7% of bacterial growth. Wow, bacteria can clog your pores, causing breakouts and acne, and nobody wants to sleep in that kind of stuff. We don't want bacteria in our beds. We want other stuff in our beds, huh, Evan? Uh, we Miracle Made Sheets. Your sheets uh, stay fresh and clean, three times longer than other sheets. They're also very luxuriously comfortable uh, without the high price tag of of other brands. It's like sleeping at a five-star hotel at home. Evan, you've been using the Miracle Made sheets. What are your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, when they say it's like sleeping at a 
in a hotel. It really does feel like that. Like they are really, really comfortable. I put the sheets on and I was like, hmm, okay. And then I got it and I was like, hmm, okay. Mm-hmm. And How then often do you wash your sheets, Evan? Um, about every like two, three weeks, maybe. Is oh, that too a, long? That's a good amount. How often are you washing your sheets? Women Bob? love asking us this question. <laughs> I know. I'm gonna get destroyed. I gotta cut this. Weekly I gotta cut without it. fail. Weekly without fail. Hmm. Well. I, I learned something new. I, I, a- Eric and I gotta go. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I'm failing like, then. When was the last time Bernie that. Sanders ran for president? <laughs> <laughs> Eric, that's too far. Use the card, Eric. <laughs> yeah. Sounds like Miracle Made Sheets is gonna be perfect for us who don't wash our sheets every week. Yep. Uh, it may be for you. Go to trymiracle.com slash break room. Codes on the screen. Uh, use code BREAKROOM to try Miracle Made Sheets today. Whether you're buying them for yourself or as a gift for a loved one, if you order today, you can save 40%. Do it, please. Mod, wait till you hear how long I wait to wash my bath towel. Uh, and if you use our promo code <laughs> BREAKROOM and check out, you'll get three free towels <laughs> and save an extra 20%. They're so confident in their product, uh, it's backed with a 30-day money-back guarantee. So if you aren't 100% satisfied, you get a full refund. Upgrade your sleep with Miracle Made. Go to trymiracle.com slash breakroom and use code breakroom to claim your free three-piece towel set and save over 40%. Again, trymiracle.com slash breakroom to treat yourself. Thank you, Miracle Made. Uh, and then we want to shout out, we've worked for this company before, leading up to the Oscars, mm. Kalshi. It's a um, it's the first legal financial exchange in the U.S. where you can bet on any event, uh, and specifically, we like to focus on the entertainment ones. And me and Evan are always talking about uh, what they're listing right now. They've got a bunch of interesting Rotten Tomatoes future scores. Ooh. So they list a movie that's going to come out, and they pick a Rotten Tomato score, and you basically, if you think it will be higher than that or lower than that, I too caught my eye the Godzilla movie that's going to come out this week. Currently, there hasn't been a Rotten Tomato score that's been released for it yet. The over-under is 60. If you think it will be above 60 or below 60. Oh. I looked at the last one, 67. Mm, it's close. I feel like it could be around that again. Yes. So I went, I went over 60. This was despite okay. Evan's best judgment. Okay. <laughs> now, I famously have gotten wrong almost every single call she I've chosen, okay? <laughs> so maybe that is good advice for you out there. You should pick against whatever I say. But I was like, I bet I bet this will be close to whatever the last one is, right? Mm. Similar, yeah. similar setup. Even this gives it even a little leeway down. Mm-hmm. And then another one that caught my eye, the first Omen, mm-hmm. I think the number for that was 40. I went under. Ooh. Mm. I have not liked the look of those trailers. Okay. And I don't think they're It's a weird trailer. Good. And the, the most recent Exorcist, Exorcist Believer, oh, yeah. got like 20. Yeah. Yeah, the, that one was supposed to be really not great. So like, I just don't know, like these kind of like franchise horror, you know, retro uh, remake kind of stuff. Like, I don't think it's going to hit. So, anyways, those are, those are two of my picks. But they have a lot of stuff. You can already. Um, Guess on what the Deadpool and Wolverine Rotten Tomatoes will be. The Borderlands five percent. Hey yo, or uh, Furiosa was another interesting one. The over under set at ninety. Wow. Ooh. Which Mad Max Fury Road? I think Fury was Road was 93, 94. Yeah. I think it was pretty high. And like for reference, I think Dune Two is at like ninety seven mm-hmm. right now. Mm-hmm. There have been some like recent really high ones. X Men ninety seven. Hundred percent. Yes. Hundred percent. Killing it. And you're gonna you pick like if I you know I went under on uh, Omen first Omen at forty, uh, and I think like I paid like fifty cents, and if it comes in and I'm right, I get a dollar basically is how you go. Mm-hmm. But also if that uh, rate goes up or down over time, I can sell early, you know, and make a little profit, or in my case, just lose a little less because I will almost certainly be wrong about everything. <laughs> bad, bad track record. So you can sign up by going to callshe.com slash break room, and the first 500 traders will get a free $20 credit. That's what Evan and I did. Evan has like quadrupled his. So uh, click the link in the video's description. Try it out. It's just a silly fun thing. Um, now we want to pivot to my favorite segment every week, the Mod Monday Minute. It's me, it's my time, let's go! Okay, so actually with this one, there's actually some fun and interesting news stories. Once I finish the story, I will look at you and I want to hear out of 10 how excited you are about it. Oh, right. love I've it. got to get through as many stories in 60 seconds as possible, so I don't need to hear an opinion. Just or a number. Thought. Just a hard number. Just a number. Mm. Okay, we can I get that time on the clock started? 
There it is, all of your Blue Milk dreams are coming true on April 17 with True Moo releasing Blue Milk inspired by the one and only Disney's Galaxy's Edge. Galaxy Edge, you can do, you can do Blue Milk, how do we feel? Uh, 10 out of 10, want to drink it. Okay, oh yeah, I heard an opinion. 1.1. One, <laughs> 1. 1. You're out, that's not the fat percentage. However, you should throw away your dreams of being cast in Superman Legacy. James Gunn has confirmed by threads that all the roles in Atlanta and all speaking roles have been filled. Mm. No score. Director Wes Ball has shared his thoughts about making his live-action Legend of Zelda movie, saying it's got to feel like something real, something serious and cool, but fun and whimsical. How do we feel? Ooh. Ten! A Dragon Ball yep. theme uh, park will be opening in Riyadh in Saudi Arabia. DBZ theme park. Nine. Seven. Ten! Agent Carter has been added to the MCU timeline on Disney+. Plus. It looks like we've got another show to catch up on. Did you like Agent Carter? Yes. Nine. Have I seen it but ten? Oh! Haley, Haley Wills can do no wrong. Haley yes, Wills. Quite, agreed. Quite amazing as Captain Also, Carter. Did, did she get through all the headlines? Yeah. All the headlines, but nice work, hey. Mod, as always. Hey. Also, is that fueling speculation that. Um, Legend of Zelda movie? Can we talk about that? Mm. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Are you excited for that? I, I'm so excited. I'm so glad it's going to be live action. It could either be the best thing we've ever seen or it could be an absolute disaster. Mm. I hope it is going to be amazing. I believe it's in safe hands. But I love the fact that we're bringing video games back to life. We had yeah. a hard trot in the 90s for bringing video games to yeah. life. Um, <laughs> even though I will always love Street Fighter and was, Mortal Kombat. Yeah. What, does Link say, what does Link say in the animated show? Link? Oh, you know what I'm um, talking about. You know what I'm talking about. Yes. Yeah. Oh, well, good for you, princess. Yeah. Something yeah. like that. Something well, like that. well, we'll find it. Who's your ideal mm. Link casting? Mm. Mm. I think I, I did. I see that Tom Holland, like, wanted to play Link. Mm. He's a bit of a Link twink, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> oh, it was. Excuse me, princess. Excuse me, no. princess. Okay. That's it. Excuse me, princess. But that Link had brown hair, and our true Link is blonde. I, is I like. I mean, Tom Holland's a great actor, and like, he hasn't done anything fantasy. He did Uncharted. Yeah, right. but that's like that's like kind of modern, real world kind mm -hmm. of right. Like nothing with. Goblins and swords and that kind of thing. Okay, I want in the comments, the Zelda movie, you know, we like to describe films where it's X meets Y, it's A meets B. What are the two things Ooh. that this movie is going to be? Is it going to be like a uh, Lord of the Rings meets mm. Goonies? Is it going to be like, oh. what, what, do we, what do we think this movie what, could even, be or I mean, should two, be? Two recent films that just come to mind, tonally maybe. Obviously, the Dungeons and Dragons Honor Monk. I movies. loved that movie. That's, they steered hard into the comedy, Ugh. right? Uh, or the, I mean, the Super Mario movie came out last year. It was a gigantic hit. Obviously, very different franchise, but um, in animated, yes, yeah, made a billion dollars. Yeah. Number one movie last year, more than Barbie or Oppenheimer. Um, okay, in Star Wars news. Uh, the Sty Skywalker saga, 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 saga. Lady Gaga saga. goes to the Skywalker sc saga. Um, <laughs> is getting a theatrical re-release. They're putting all nine films in chronological order out in theaters on May fourth. May fourth be with you. I have you. a question for everyone as well. What was the first Star Wars movie you saw in cinema? In the oh. on the big screen, what was the I, first movie? I think I saw Empire Strikes Back when they did the re-release ahead of the prequels. I did it for Return of the Jedi. Return of the Jedi. Oh, nice. Yeah. yeah. And mm. like I dragged a bunch of friends and they'd never even seen a Star Wars and I convinced them all to watch the third in the trilogy. And they're like, what's happening? I'm like, shh. <laughs> it's just good, okay? <laughs> I think mine was Force Awakens probably. Oh, yeah. That, yeah. that was mine too. Yeah. yeah. You youngs weren't around for, young uh, buck. <laughs> to wait in line for Phantom Menace. Uh, I was in Ghana for that. Uh, yeah, so I, uh, uh. What's a theater scene like in Ghana? Now, great. Yeah. Back in 2000 or 99? Not so good. Not, not the best. Mm. It's all, it all satellite and telecom. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Are they, are films like American movies shown in English? Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep, because Ghana was colonized by the British. Okay. <laughs> Thanks, Queen. <laughs> hey, so was Australia. Hey. Hey. hey, so was America. Hey, no. oh. not as recent. Not as recent. <laughs> uh, okay, uh, yeah. So, um, Phantom Menace will be in theaters that whole weekend to celebrate its 25th anniversary. It's already been 25 years. They're also going to uh, show some acolyte footage. At the Phantom Menace screenings. That's that cool. Series coming out. Uh, you know what? They June. need to incentivize people more. Remember how it used to be like we'll play the trailer before the movie and you'd be like, Phew, and then the I mean, came out. Famously, speaking of Star Wars, they played the the trailer for the Phantom Menace uh, debuted ahead of um, 
Meet Joe Black movie. What? And like it uh -huh. contributed like a hundred million dollars to Meet Joe Black because everybody bought tickets just to see the Phantom Menace. Yeah, but trailer. then after mm. Meet Joe Black, everyone bought peanut butter to eat it with a spoon. <laughs> Did you guys not see me so black? Synergy. I... You know what? It's that not joke a... fell so flat. <laughs> I can tell you guys are not thirsty women that love to see Brad Pitt eating peanut butter with a spoon. I guess uh, that's just me. I've seen the meme of him getting hit by a bus. <laughs> I've seen that. Yeah. So many times. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, you know, a nine movie marathon, especially when a couple of those movies are longy. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, it's pretty intense. But if you were to like pop in at any point, is there is there a particular Star Wars film you would like to see again? Rogue on the big One. Bro. Oh. Oh. Not one of the ones they're going to be showing. Uh, uh, wait, really? <laughs> but they're just no, doing the nine. Oh, uh, the Skywalker. The Skywalker. Skywalker. Yeah. Oh, yeah. damn it. But I agree. I would love to see that on the big oh, screen man. again. Yeah. I wouldn't mind seeing a six meter long Nexu. What's the next? It's the, the, the wide mouthed cat on Geonosian when it's clawing up and it, it gets oh. Amidala's side, oh, and all yeah. of a sudden she's got a midriff. Was that my sexual awakening? <laughs> 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 there's a lot of people with either Hayden Christensen or Natalie Portman. There's a lot no, of people no, no, that had both. some thoughts. Yeah. <laughs> had some thought, or both. That started I definitely had a Hayden Christensen as Anakin on my roof, so every morning when I woke up, it would be the first thing that I saw. Aww, yeah. wow. And then I interviewed Hayden Christensen. I still was like, hello, Nessa. I was so nervous. Nice to talk to you. And he's like, hello. Uh -huh. <laughs> like, I had the biggest crush on you. Mm -hmm. That's great. Um, once walked by Natalie Portman on a sidewalk. Yeah. Look at you. So crazy. basically, we've had equivalent experiences. Uh, <laughs> uh, so, uh, and then, you know, that got us thinking they're also going to re release all of the live action Spider Man films in theaters over the next uh, few months. So can we, oh, uh, re, an Alamo Draft House, which yes. if you're not in anywhere that has an Alamo theater, there are, they do particular screenings where they serve booze, yeah. you can have dinner, and some screenings are like rowdy encouraged. Party, mm -hmm. yeah. I want a rowdy um, Spider-Man OG trilogy. Like, yes, the oh. Raimi. Oh my God. Yeah. Well, so that, that got us talking, you know, like what other films, or, or these included, would you love to see in a big screen? And I think like what's important is these are all limited releases because like you don't really, I don't want to go see Spider-Man 2 with four other people mm. in the theater. I might as well just watch it at home or whatever, right? Like you want a packed theater of you energized fans. Yeah. You know, maybe uh, some of the, like again, for the youngs among us, right? Like probably didn't see the Raimi films in a theater, uh, uh, the last one for sure. Okay, that I yep, that was my one of my last days of high school was when that oh. came out. Oh, yeah. well, it's only yeah. Same. If, or if you, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah uh, it was definitely last days of high school, and that was after you went back after college, right? <laughs> <laughs> for me too. Um, but like you know, maybe it's either a film you didn't get a chance to watch on a big screen mm. because you know you're too young or you just missed it or you, you weren't into that fandom at the time or it's just it's been 20 years or it's been a while i mean we were talking about if it, if it was going to be a packed theater of jacked up fans i'd go see endgame tomorrow oh, yeah tomorrow yes. i'd love to watch that again yep. in the theater you know if they did a double feature of infinity war and endgame oh. that, that's solid that's oh six they hours. would make like i reckon 50 percent their total budget when it first came out again doing that mm -hmm. which makes sense just make a day it's like four to seven you get infinity war get a dinner break and come back for like eight to eleven or get something re-release like release an infinity gauntlet popcorn bucket because oh. that's like all the shit right yeah. now can I just say, a strategy, because it's like, you know, should big studios be re-releasing movies that are already out? Long story short, repurposing is such a good marketing strategy now. Just because you made something once doesn't mean it's done and dusted. Yeah. If yeah. it had popularity, hell, I keep posting photo shoots that I did seven years ago. There you go. And they're getting liked. So it's like, <laughs> you do repurpose, you keep putting it out there. Yes. If it's still good, the fans still exist. I think that some of the best things that LA does is they converted the... the Hollywood Cemetery, and they'll do like again, yeah. sort of rowdy Cemetery, movies. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. That's sort of I saw Dawn of the fun. Dead there not too long ago. Oh. It was a great experience. Yeah, it and there, there are like, I think, especially in our age where it's like, you know, we spend a lot of time on TikTok or, we, or, or just at home watching streaming stuff. A, co a collective experience, mm -hmm. especially not even with a new film that you might really enjoy, but like something that you already have a very specific relationship with. That a movie you've factor, watched yeah. 10 times, but maybe haven't in a long time watched with other people. Um, is so cool, and especially like you mentioning Alamo Draft House, and you know, rep theaters have been doing this 
to a smaller degree across the country for a long time. We love the uh, Brain Dead Studios here in LA. Wherever you live, there's probably some fun theaters that might show, you know, a foreign film, an indie film, and then like Jaws or mm -hmm. Terminator 2 or whatever. Showgirls. Right? Oh, yep. right? Yeah, Very or like, <laughs> you know, Alamo Draft House famously had all those screenings of Cats oh, God. for a long time. I did it, and I, I'd i never seen Cats before, and I realized quite quickly how bad this movie was. Mm. I drank, drink responsibly. I drank a whole <laughs> bottle of red wine, and I cannot remember the end of the film, because that was my intention. Wow. I, if I could have poured it in my eyes to stop me from seeing it, I would have done so, well, but that was the next I, And that's another thing. Maybe you were uh, a child when The Phantom Menace or Spider-Man 1 came out, mm -hmm. but now you're of legal drinking age. It can be a very different experience yeah. for you. Even better, what if it was a movie that shaped your teen or formative years and now you're old and you've got kids? Oh. And you bring your kids to see it on the big screen yes. just like how you did the first time. Yeah. Back in my day, we went to a cinema. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 share that. And like, cool story, mom. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, besides just like the financial gain of it, right? It's not done and dusted. Like we were talking earlier, Zach, like about other like students Studios outside of like Disney or rather like other IP that's not like coming immediately to the forefront. So like the Alien movies with Alien Romulus coming out or like Gladiator in front of Gladiator 2 or even Twist, the original Twister, right? Yeah. Like, do you guys feel like that would be like a, a helpful addition to the theater? OG Beetlejuice ahead yeah. of uh, yeah. the sequel yes. to that, right? I actually think that's, I mean, one could say that it's a capitalist, capitalistic cop-out because it is just just purely for revenue. But at the same time, you both told me that you wanted to watch Dune before you saw Dune 2 again. Mm -hmm. And I think a refresher is really cool, but a refresher on the big screen, that's yeah. a fun way to do it. I'm about it. Especially yeah. like Gladiator. That was such a great movie. Didn't it one did, one Best, best Picture? picture. Yeah. That's right. One best Picture. In the, in the year 2000. Um, <laughs> in the year 2000. Yeah. Um, uh, that's another automatic. Bill Jason Paxton. Derulo uh, and year and, 2000 and, and Coda, are, yeah. are his trainers. Uh, if we can figure out two more phrases, he will win her soldier on us. Uh, 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 but uh, yeah, I think, and you know, like, they are, it is absolutely inessential. All of these things, you can consume them a thousand different ways at home, but it is about having that experience, right? And, and I think like they should do it more often. This is of course a pretty thin year for theatrical releases. Mm -hmm. The strikes have delayed a lot of stuff. A lot of stuff got moved to next year. So there's just not a ton coming out in theaters. And so to fill some of those gaps, some of those dead periods, like yeah, throw some, they, they did that at the end of the pandemic. Right around Top Gun Maverick, weren't they like, they re-released Titanic and like all yes. the other movies oh, yeah. and theaters? I actually right? hadn't seen Titanic in full and I was like, I'm going to see <laughs> that movie. And then I didn't. Oh, <laughs> wow, what a squid <laughs> uh, Also, I saw the, the door. Everyone died, by the way. Hmm. <laughs> Spoiler alert. <laughs> the, the door that Kate Winslet is on that saves her life at the end wow. of Titanic just sold for $700,000 at auction, wow. beating wow. Indiana Jones's whip which was previously one of the highest... Did someone uh, buy it just to prove and do experiments that you can successfully... You could have got him on there too. Oh, yeah, yeah probably. Oh, wow. uh, there's also a strange prop, because it's like, it's not like I would see that and be like, oh, that's the Titanic door. <laughs> it's just like a random I mean, door. How many yeah. times have you seen Titanic, though? That's true. Not in a while. Yeah. yeah. Um, so before we get into the question that I have written up, I want to ask this question here from Elijah Dante. Could re-releases supplement profits and let more experimenting with films if they can spread profits year round and they don't all have to be big budget blockbusters? I love that. If they can actually start funding mid-budget films again, I can't remember which director it was, but it was like uh, 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 who was uh, it? American Fiction. Yeah, that guy. Yeah. Yeah. It, yeah. yeah, it was because it was all indies which aren't supported at all, or it's big, big blockbusters, and like the age of the mid-budget had sort of just died a little yes. bit. But if yeah, for some reason, like it just over the time wasn't worth investing in. I think mid-budget should come back at a big boom. Yes. And if that's the way that it can fund it, mm -hmm. that's amazing. Yeah. I am so sick of studios and being told that no one's got budgets anymore. Yeah. It, it's it's wild when you look at like the box office lists from like the 80s and even into the early 90s, when there would be like a Back to the Future or, or you know, a Star Wars in there, but then it'd be like, Presumed Innocent was the number nine movie for the year or something yeah. like that, you know? It was a lot of just like adult dramas and like little thrillers, coming of age movies yeah. and thrillers Comedies. and stuff like that. And just all of those are just not being made now. Well, I think yeah. the studios took the wrong lesson from the success of uh, If Any War and Endgame because Endgame did a billion and a half or something like dollars and like they were like, oh, if we just throw all the money at a movie, it'll make all that money back. And it's like, no, like, there were 20 movies that led up to that conclusion. That's why people were so yeah. tuned in. So, 
you know, make a bunch yeah. of things yeah. to lead up to stuff. And I think like the streaming era and like post pandemic, it shifted a lot of our habits. I think people are going to the movies a little less often. And so they need something that is like, gets people to go to the mm. theater. This is, I can't wait two months and stream this. I need to go to the theater. But, and that certainly applies to big budget spectacle, Marvel and Star Wars, but it can apply to a lot of other stuff too, right? You're right, like mid budget, I guess does exist, but it's straight to Netflix. And then everyone yes. watches it in a 48 hour window and then no one speaks about it again. What was that Charlie Theron movie? The Old Guard? Old Guard, yeah. Yeah. Old, yeah. And that That's would have been good. mid budget for sure. Yeah. And that was like great, but we all watched it and never spoke about it again. Yeah. Yeah. Like. That should be, those should be like your theatrical releases, shouldn't they? Yeah, mm -hmm. unlike, uh, yeah, that, that's a that's an interesting reference. I think, was that Gina Prince Blythewood directed Old Guard? Who then did uh, Woman King, which mm, came out yeah, yeah. two years ago? Yeah, 22, uh, I think. But that got a theatrical yeah, release, and I feel like it had a much, was a much bigger part of the conversation than the Old Guard, right? Like, well, so it's an interesting if they are comparison. Shopping, if they're shopping it for awards, it has to have a minimum of like a two week theatrical release, yes. the minimum amount of cinemas so even if it is straight to uh, a streamer if they want to push it for an award season it needs a yes. limited release and, and netflix has a hack for that they bought sure a couple do. theaters in la mm. and they just play them there to nobody mm. is that yeah. Roma? Uh, i want to ask you guys what movie is it could be like a movie that we talk about here or otherwise that would you want to see in theaters again uh if you need to take a second to start i will say 10 things i hate about you okay oh, <laughs> the, the teenage mutant ninja turtle trilogy from the oh. 90s wow yeah Give me all um, three. My answer I mean, is it's topical, but a movie I've seen probably 40 times on home video and didn't get a chance because it came out in 1987. David Lynch's Dune, baby. Ah. Let's go. Oh much God. hated, but much loved by They were me. just showing it videos okay. uh, right oh. after Dune came out. I should have sent it to you. I'm sorry. Mm. I should have gone. Um, I want to see The Fall by Tarzan Singh starring Lee Pace. Oh, it's an yeah. incredible movie. The story about it is wild. I cannot wait to see that on the big screen one day. Mm. All right. Um, it's very that, good. Though. It's kind of like a dark uh, Princess Bride. It's like a story within yeah. a story type yeah. deal. Ooh. Yeah. Okay. What's it called? The Fall. The Fall. I think you, he probably filmed it concurrently with Pushing Daisies, if I had to guess. Uh, okay. I'll find out. Yeah, you know. so like 08, something yeah, like that, yeah. 07, 08. Okay. Yep. I will watch that this week. Mm. And you can find it. <laughs> yeah, we had to get a DVD for it. It's, it's kind of hard to find. Jelly Bean Planet. I have jelly beans in my pocket. All of them are good. Get yours, NW Rockstar. We got a new code, use it, and you can be as cool as me. 15 I, NW Rockstar to get 15% off your 42.5 ounce I'm gonna drug. tell you the flavors that I've got in here, and you tell me if I'm right. Grape, tangerine. Uh -uh. How would we know if we're Vanilla. If right? <laughs> your fate. Do you not have Mod. faith in Mod? <laughs> Believe in mod. <laughs> mod does that, does I, that go in the sizzle reel, it, Zach? It was, I don't know. <laughs> hey, Easter. Easter is this Sunday. It is. But if you order today mm. or whenever you're watching this, you can get these in time for Easter. Fill your Easter baskets. I was my um, whole pocket full, and now I'm all out. Also, you don't have to hold them in your pocket. They sell them in jars, okay? It's not, they won't come loose. This to your little home. bag that just disposes yeah, the dispenser right. thing? It's not like a guy just comes full. to your door. I love a good pocket full. <laughs> You little sneaky it's like, show me your pockets. <laughs> Fills them from a, from a tub. I um, imagine the Easter bunny has a pouch in the front and it just reaches into there. Yeah, right? yeah. That's, yeah. that's a kangaroo. Out, Are you coming out warm? just a big rabbit. <laughs> but you're from Australia. What's, it, what's the inside of a kangaroo's pouch like? Is it smooth? Is it moist? Is it goopy? <laughs> Is it warm? What's I imagine it? it's very warm. Oh, well, as the <laughs> numerous times I put my hand, like, what do you think we do I down there? like <laughs> cats down there, right? Everybody has one, right? Yeah. No, they're gonna find Or like you. a neighborhood kangaroo. You guys just like, oh yeah, that's uh, oh, Ronnie over there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> hey, can we just get back to the news stream? Uh, because I, what, Phantom, uh, Phantom 101 529 says, uh, those jelly beans are so delicious that that's what I do every time I watch Break Room. I eat the jelly beans. Uh, they so said, do I. Uh, they're actually very tasty. I'm surprised how good they are. I mean, you shouldn't be because they're great. We've been telling you they're good. Yeah. You think we're liars? <laughs> um, Look yeah. how empty planet. this jar's becoming. Like, <laughs> no, I think that's that was all us. Like, yeah, right, really. There's no optical illusion. We yeah. are eating these guys down. Me and Brian finishing the Break Room edits. You know we're eating those jelly beans. <laughs> 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 all right, so uh, popular rumor scooper. Can we get some toast? Share that Seth Rogen will be writing and producing an R-rated Venom project for Sony. Zach, you asked everyone to hold their thoughts? Yeah, thoughts on uh, uh, an animated Venom film from Seth Rogen. So Seth and um, Sony have had a partnership for a long time now. I believe it's at like at least the 10 year mark. And Sony kind of lets him fly. Uh, he has a wide berth of what he can bring to the table. So I think if he get, is given permission, we can get some batshit fun. 
I think it's yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'm he just it. did the animated Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Mm -hmm. sure. Mutant yeah. Mayhem last mm -hmm. year. Pretty beloved. Did right? great, yeah. Mm -hmm. I just watched it recently, yeah. And he did Sausage Party, which mm -hmm. was the fun, silly, disgusting <laughs> romp, uh, but very enjoyable. Mm -hmm. So yeah, he could do really and, good things and, with Venom. And of course produces The Boys and Gen V mm -hmm. for Prime. Has a pretty good track record as a creative producer mm -hmm. for genre properties in general, in addition to all his films. I mean, it's funny you mentioned he has a great track record with Sony. Uh, it was his movie about the interview. Uh, yeah, the interview <laughs> that got Sony hacked by North Korean hackers that leaked all the stuff about all the different drama across all their movies. Uh, it's so funny, but it didn't stop their relationship yeah. with yeah. with him. Um, I think it's a great idea, and people pointed out, you know, Sony's track record with this with. Their Marvel properties is not spotless. Nope. Though the animation stuff. Really good, top notch. So maybe it's nice to steer yeah. into that, but a very different creative team and creative direction than the Spider-Verse films. Probably gonna steer very much into the comedy angle with with a character like uh, Venom that can be pretty outrageous. I think that's, that's gonna be fun. Yeah. yeah. Now this won't replace a live action Venom 3, will it? I don't no, think we're, so. we're getting that's, that this year. Yeah, no still what. on track to it's probably, it. I wonder if this hints at that franchise kind of wrapping up in its current um, incarnation. Because, mm -hmm. I mean, I guess we have concurrent animated Spider-Man and live action Spider-Man. Mm -hmm. So like Tom Hardy could keep doing live action and this become a new franchise. Mm -hmm. But maybe they're like, oh, we'll take some time off of the live action and do animated for a while, maybe. Nice. Yeah. Cosmic Circus saying Haley Atwell, Captain Carter is in play for Avengers Secret Wars. What do you guys think? Do you think we see a live action Haley Atwell in uh, Secret Wars as Captain Carter? Yes, I want to see live action Haley Atwell anywhere, but especially in, uh, <laughs> especially in the Captain Carter suit. Get that shield up, toss it around. Want to see it? Yeah. It'll be weird. We already saw her die once as that character. I mean, yeah. I but mean, we'll see the the, the what if incarnation of her, right? Oh. We'll see. We'll see her step out from animated and become live action. Oh, uh, that'd, that'd be dope. That's sick. <laughs> that'd be dope. That's cool. Zach shaking his head. No, you don't like get it. Out you don't like it. <laughs> it's wild. What is this the Pers Simpsons movie or something like that? <laughs> yeah. Respectfully, Zach, you're so wrong. You are so wrong with not liking that. <laughs> Fair. It's perfect. It's Fair. perfection. Fair. I'm on. Yeah, Team Eric. We're, we know what we're on mm. about. Mm. Mine knows what's up. Haley at all as well. Mm. With Haley. I didn't mean to ruin the no, vibe. No, no, no. I like that. Is Zach that. trying to land <laughs> in a joke? And you got a sincere and solemn note. I uh, did. Well wishes to Haley Atwell's family in this time of mourning. <laughs> what was my joke? No, no, no. It just felt like it was like a rest in peace. Like, uh, uh, tone. I should have been more like, ooh. Is that better? No, she is great. Uh, she was my favorite part of the most recent Mission Impossible movie. Yeah, she was great. Really yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and, and like, I'm, I'm not hating on it. I think, yeah, again, that's a fun character. Put it, put her in anything. Why not? Um, I just think it'll be strange. I, 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 I bet like Marvel is thinking right now. If we're building to a Secret Wars movie, if that movie is populated by a bunch of characters most people do not know, mm. that might be tough. I agree. So like maybe if we see her in something leading up to that. In something else, right? Mm -hmm. Not just I animated. Think so. I mean, I think she's kind of had the ideal arc for that character, though, right? A character that could be like animated, and then we see the tease, right, in live action multiverse madness. But then it's like, oh, but there's we all know there's variants or whatever, you know. Uh, I I think it'd be really interesting, but it Hold is, on, she it was is in a tough sell. Doctor Strange, is yeah, the post credit, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, or not post credit, the eight one eight or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah it was, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, yeah, and we are getting a real Fantastic Four. We'll probably get a live action Professor X, right? All the other characters that showed up in that scene were mm -hmm. kind of, yeah. even the, the um, uh, Monica Rambo, uh, 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 Captain Marvel. Showing up in the Marvels yes. post credit, yeah, yeah. right? Like, oh, yes, it's, uh, uh, yeah, it's binary. binary. Yeah. Yes, mm -hmm. yeah. So, like, there are, yeah, the, the threads from that scene could continue to influence the live action for sure. Yeah. The threads, just like how uh, Wanda threaded everybody in that <laughs> battle scene. Turned him into uh, spaghetti. Uh, yeah. Uh, little, little noodles of, of contact. <laughs> um, okay, I think that's enough for today. What do you say, Evan? Yeah, I think uh, so. <laughs> three accuses of running long. We then did another 12 minutes. Um, <laughs> Thank you, Evan. Consummate professionals up here. We going. That's right. The people want content. Yes. We're just satisfying that need, okay? Mm -hmm. I held a pen this episode. Not sure if this is my new gimmick. Ooh. 
Guy who holds pen. You are John Stewart. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Leave a comment if it's Zach's new gimmick, if you made it this far. <laughs> I had one hand in my pocket, and the other was on a jelly bean. <laughs> <laughs> Mod Morissette over here. Mod Morissette. Mod Morissette. Jagged little beam. Know what I'm talking about? I don't think he's old enough to get the reference. No, Alana's, he's young. Oh yeah, Jagged yeah. Little Pill. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. He gets it. He gets it. Yeah, it's just the baby face. I'm actually 62 years old. Wow. wow. You look great. For thank you. I most shirts. Yes. <laughs> uh, thank you so much for watching, everybody. Make sure to subscribe to the Break Room channel on YouTube. Uh, catch us on Twitch whenever you can. And uh, keep an eye out. The next upload, probably, on The Break Room uh, is going to be our X-Men 97 episode three after show. <laughs> Wednesday morning. Gonna figure out who, who just had that baby? And who was that at the door? Uh, all will be revealed, hopefully. Um, thank you so much for watching. Follow Eric and Maud uh, on their social platforms to know about all the cool stuff they're doing. In Saskatchewan. Yes, in yeah, surrounding areas. Saskatchewan. Uh, and most importantly, have a great day, everybody. Bye, Bye. Internet.